Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, even though I happen to be standing outside right now. In my server rack tour video a couple of months ago, I introduced you to everything that was inside my rack. However, as the summer months rolled on, I ran into a major problem, and that was my rack seems to be, well, not staying very cool. I've also ran into a second issue, and that's that I'm actually running out of space in my 27U rack. So today we're gonna solve that problem, and then in the next video we're gonna solve the overheating problem. So how do we solve the running out of space issue? Let me introduce you to my new rack. This is a 42U APC net shelter rack that I picked up on Craigslist for about $120, and this is certainly going to solve the space issue. However, it's also the first step in solving my cooling issue. Late last month, I reached out to Triplite, and they were kind enough to send over a rack mount air conditioner and ducting system, and that'll be here in just a couple of days. But first off, I need to get this thing ready for rack mount air conditioning. Now, I love these net shelter racks, and I've used them quite a few times, but this one has one major drawback that I was kind of looking forward to, and that is that it is not a fully enclosed rack. You'll notice the distinct lack of side panels in this one. Now, if anyone has ever bought any enterprise networking equipment, you know that it is all obscenely expensive, even if it is just bent sheet metal, and side panels for a rack are no exception. In fact, the net shelter rack actually went out of production about six years ago or so, and the side panels haven't been in production for at least four years. And the side panels for this rack happen to be $620 each. So while the $120 was a fantastic deal for a 42U frame, I am certainly not in the market to buy a brand new side panel, if you could even find one available. Which brings me to why I am standing outside today. I'm actually going to build a set of side panels for my net shelter rack. Just off to the side of the camera there, I have two 4x8 sheets of 3 8 inch MDF, and it was about the cheapest stuff that I could find that was available in a full 4x8 sheet, and it only cost me about $11 each. In fact, I spent more on the M6 bolts to actually bolt the panels into the rack and the black paint to paint them black to match than I did on the plywood itself. So the plan for today is to hopefully get those sheets cut down to size, get them mounted onto the rack, paint them black, and then get all of my equipment moved over to the new rack. So let's get started. Ugh. One. And two. Now building these panels, I do want the doors to still be able to open with their full range of motion. So I don't want to build them beyond the hinge right here. So I'm going to measure from the front post right here to the rear post right here, and then build these to fit inside of that frame. All right, so that's going to be 38 and a quarter wide. By 77 and three quarter. That crow really doesn't want me to work, does he? 38 and one quarter by 77 and three quarter. Let's go write that down. Luckily, I don't have to talk that much anymore because the crows are going absolutely nuts out here. But we have our measurements. Let's get this thing cut out. All right, now that they're all cut out, now the really fun part, figuring out how to actually get them onto the rack and get them to bolt up square. Uh, and yet again, I have neighborhood wildlife disagreeing with uh, my choice to shoot a video outside today. say how glad I am this thing is on wheels. Actually, I have an idea. Hold on. Oh, as it starts to rain. Really? 
MDF doesn't like rain. I think we're gonna have to postpone this. Dang it. <laughs> All right, hopefully that was a false alarm. So uh, I'm gonna go get the MDF back out and we'll see if we can get this thing put together. All right, I have a crazy idea for how to actually line up the side panels. And I think I'm gonna lay the whole rack on its side and then drill the holes through the uh, M6 mounting holes and get it all lined up that way. But first, I'm gonna take off the doors. Go. <sighs> Not heavy at all. Whew. didn't fall off. Now for the really fun part, uh, figuring out how to attach this rail about two inches further out than it uh, sits. So I need to mark those holes very accurately. Oh, that is perfect. That actually worked. <laughs> All right, that's a side panel, uh, at least one of them. Let's get the other one on there. So for those that don't know, this is called a cage nut. And you see all these square holes in the front of the rack. Well, most screws are round. That kind of makes sense, right? Well, what you do with a cage nut is you install it into the back of the rack like that. And then whatever screw or bolt you're using comes through the front side and it sandwiches it together. And it's basically holding the nut in place for you. Well, what I'm doing right here is I have these very nice long M6 bolts and they are threading through and I'm going to use the cage nuts on this side to actually use the rack to support the side panels that I made. And that goes in just like that, bolt goes in the front, and Bob's your uncle. And that 
is one fully enclosed rack. Now, obviously it's still a long way from being finished. I still need to paint it black so it matches the outside of it. I still need to get all of my equipment into here, but honestly, looks weren't the most important thing. Function was the most important thing, and all we're trying to do here is control the airflow inside of this rack. Now, the reason the airflow is going to be so important inside of here, you'll learn when I get the air conditioning unit in, and I'll explain how that's gonna work. But for right now, I think I'm gonna take these panels off, I'm gonna get them all painted up, and then we'll come back to this tomorrow, and I'll mount everything in here. So, we'll see you after the break. All right, a couple quick coats of paint and some finished work later, and it is out with the old. And in with the new. I have to say, uh, I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. Uh, from about 10 feet away, it looks perfectly normal. It looks like a perfectly normal, fully enclosed rack. Uh, but rather than costing me about $1,250 for side panels, I'm into these for about $80. It's about $25 in plywood, $25 for the hardware to mount everything up, about $25 in paint, and then I had to go out and buy a roller. So we're sitting right around 80 bucks. And uh, honestly, for the results, I am just thrilled. But now comes the really fun part of actually getting everything out of the old rack and into the new rack. So let's do that right now. Good morning. Now that is what I would call an absolute success. And it's morning, but don't worry, this is non-alcoholic. Still hops though. These are way better than they deserve to be. So everything is back in the rack, everything is up and running, and I could not be more happy with these results. However, this is just the first step of two to my complete rack upgrade. 
In the very next video, I will be installing a rack mount air conditioner into this rack and creating essentially a plenum space up front. That means the servers will only be able to draw in that nice cold air. Also, we're gonna exhaust all of the hot air from this rack out of the back of the house. That really adds two benefits to my whole system. Number one, the servers are no longer going to heat up my garage. And number two, even when it's 95 or 100 or 105 degrees outside, again, uh, my servers are going to stay nice and cold. And that's going to wrap it up for today, or what became a three day long project. Anyway, if you liked this video, make sure to click that button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see and wanna help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. As a bonus for a minimum $1 donation, you'll get access to my exclusive Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.